I think what makes a great song is feeling good when you're singing it and playing it. If you feel good doing it, you're on the right track because you inherently you have this notion how melody works and how harmony works and rhythm. And when you feel those uh, moving parts all coming together, you can feel the, the great song. Now there's a bigger answer to that too is, you know, writing the great song. So that's kind of a, a method that you may, based on your background, kind of come up with a way of approaching it. What's the structure, the layout of the pieces and how are they interrelated? And how do you heighten interest as you go from beginning to end and kind of get buy-in from listeners? And listeners are very smart. They, they couldn't tell you what makes a good song, but they know when they hear it. And so as a writer, you're, you're uh, coming from your inside, what makes you tick as an artist, but you're also aware of people who are listening because you really don't own your music. Your audience owns your music. Perform a lot of great songs on your on your set. Uh, it's a common theme that goes through through your set, and you obviously enjoy performing them. Um, tell me about the 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 variety, the, the eclectic nature of of your set list. Anywhere from Kiss to a reggae version of Johnny Be Good. I mean, yeah. and some jazz standards. It's it's yeah. you know it's all over the board, but yeah. it's all really interesting. The songs that comprise your set can be where you're playing. Uh, if you find that you're in a, in a live bar club situation where there's alcohol involved and people socializing in that manner, you can kick out a song list that kind of plays to the behavior in the room. So it's kind of theatrical and, and if you include your audience in what you're doing, that's how you kind of come up with a song list. If you're playing a softer show where people are maybe at a winery or some kind of thing and they're, and they're not really dancing, you play a different set. And the, the songs that I have been putting into these sets, uh, you hearken back to what influenced you. And if you listen to a lot of different music that, that's surrounding you, um, you know, you can find your in influences in you know, the great American music from the, the R&B to the, to the rock, to the country stuff. And uh, it so easily fits together. You, you end up kind of coming up with hybrids of the stuff that preceded you. And you, you try to make it your own. Each artist, I think, kind of has a certain range of songs that they kind of, that they kind of dig. So it's an affirmation of something emotionally that impacted you a long time ago and over and continues to. And so when you play, you're kind of uh, affirming that and putting it out there, what initially you internalized and being influenced by. Flavor Packet, Easton Everett, what can someone expect? I've been going out with the Easton Everett Band. Uh, we play as a trio. My background has really been as a trio, and uh, essentially that's a good format. If the vocals are strong and predominant, you know, I think about 75, 80% of pop music is the vocals and the melody that goes through the vocal that easily connects with, with audiences.
Flavor Packet is a jazz group that I lead. It's a contemporary jazz group that is a four-piece guitar, electric bass, sometimes acoustic bass, keyboard, and drums. And I write in a kind of contemporary jazz style that is not soft jazz or the sweet jazz. Straight, it's more in a straight-ahead contemporary style, maybe akin to what Pat Metheny does. We go out with about uh, 15 originals, and we do play some jazz standards. And uh, the jazz standards are really terrific because they embody uh, forces in music that everybody who's, who's into jazz goes back to. You, you listen to that stuff, and um, again, you internalize it and, and put it out in your own version of doing it. Flavor Packet is, is an upbeat sound. We've, we've used some interesting percussion. Our, our drummer is a Afro-Cuban uh, percussionist as well as a trap drummer. He's been coming out with the Kunga setup as well as a trap kit and plays this eclectic style where he simultaneously plays the hand drums and the trap kit. So he really has brought a terrific range of, of drumming to, to the group. Jazz music is not the most popular music commercially, but there are certain audiences and certain situations. Jazz music is a great way to connect with people. Central Coast of California, yeah. uh, you pull musicians from a variety of places, I would imagine. Yeah. I'm based in the Central California coast. Uh, there's, uh, maybe not surprisingly, this is a small market. There's not a lot of people that live around here compared to Los Angeles, San Francisco, etc. But within that, there's a rich group of very high quality uh, musicians that play in a variety of styles. So as a band leader, and playing as many shows as we play. There's a great group of people. I do have a core group, which is the same guys for both groups, essentially. So uh, we're able to kind of track, go from the jazz stuff to the rock music. And uh, a lot of good players here and um, really helps to contribute to a really big sound. As a songwriter, you know, you really, deliver what you have in the ensemble where all the moving parts are, are clicking on and uh, it really works well around here. Great music culture and actually a big part of that is that there's a big listening audience here on the Central Coast. Surprisingly, people go out and listen to music and so if you're a musical artist uh, you want to get hired, the audience is what uh, connects you.